Ladies and gentlemen, strap on in. So we got John Gordon on the show today. Might not be the longest interview we've done, but it's among our most spirited. Lots of spirit. Lots we'll of get spirit. to his bio and stuff in a little bit. But first, Kelvin, how you doing? I'm doing fine, Josh. I'm doing I'm 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 up here in upstate New York. It started snowing yesterday, but they quit and it started snowing again this morning and they quit. And uh, I can still see there's some roadway, but the sun is shining right now and it's good. A little chilly, but I think probably the cast is set. We are. Uh, it's, it's time for winter to show up. You're in that season. Aren't you huh? happy? Well, it has cooled off significantly here. Uh, it, we went out for a walk this morning. It was about 63. Okay. So not quite snow weather, but close enough for us. We don't have 63 here. <laughs> it's lesser. It's lesser. So, but that's all right. So uh, how about you? How you, how you? Hey, th- things are, things are doing good. Um, you know, we're progressing. The year just keeps ticking. Thanksgiving will be coming up soon. I've heard stories. In fact, I think that's our next episode, right? Because, yeah, the yeah, next episode be. will be Thanksgiving week. Um, and then... You might want to throw in a couple of surprise issues in between. Well, maybe that's not worked that hard. Yeah, well, we've been pretty consistent about every Monday for three and a half years. <laughs> you know. Okay, be that way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so was- yeah. So snow in there, and you know what that means? It means um, it's soup weather. And that means you want to get with our friends at Kettle and Fire, get you some soup, get you some bone broth to uh, be the base of your homemade soup. They want to give you 10% off just for listening to this podcast. You have to prove you listen to the podcast by using code Better Humanhood at checkout. That's it. That's it. Kettleandfire.com. Fill up your box with whatever you'd like. 10% off at checkout by using code Better Humanhood. That's K E T T L E A N D F I R E.com. I can spell Kettle and Fire. Yay. Spell dot com. I dare you. Go ahead. <laughs> I <it>. didn't say that. <laughs> We better play. Do, do not spell out dot. <laughs> do not spell out dot. Sorry. So John Gordon just released his twentieth book. The week we talked to him, and it's called "The One Word for Kids." And we we talk about the one word concept a little bit. Um, but Kevin, you you had a story about the one word. Uh, I did. And uh, you tell that during during the episode, um, but really the you know this comes on the, uh, the this episode comes really after the release of the coffee bean a couple of months ago, and yeah, he tells us a little bit about Damon West, who he co-wrote the book with, and he tells us uh, the coffee bean story and how it applies to life. Mm-hmm. In general and in business, and um, how it you know, first story the f- story first came to to uh, Mr. West while he was in prison. Um, we should note that he uh, John uh, once ran for office in Atlanta, yet he found uh, this. He found this story from his friend at Clemson, Coach Dabo Sweeney. And if you uh, know anything about college football in this area of the country, um, yeah, it might get your ire up a little bit. (laughs) (laughs) Be that way. But anyway, um, he's been in the the positivity business for even longer than Kelvin has. Um, and uh, 
And I'm going to pick on him a little because he picks on me during the <laughs> episode. I, d- I, do d- I did not. not no, 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 not you. Not you. Oh, oh. Uh, John. John picks on me a little bit. <laughs> oh, yeah, he did, didn't he? Yeah, he did. yeah. And he knows we have that relationship anyway. Uh-huh. He knows you're the pretty one, apparently. He's been li- <laughs> apparently, he's been listening. <laughs> <laughs> sounds like. Sounds like. So we got another fan. Look at that. Yeah. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, John Gordon. Welcome to the Josh and Kelvin World Domination Podcast, where we talk about better humanhood and teach you how to dominate your world. All right. Well, um, we'll we'll go over your bio and stuff uh, for a show and show or whatever. But uh, why don't you start with uh, introducing your mission and letting us know why that's your mission? Great. So my mission is to inspire and encourage as many people as possible, one person at a time. It's to help people become more positive, to create a more positive world, and then on the business side. It's about developing positive leaders and building stronger teams. Great. Why? Why? Yeah. You know, it's hard to say. I mean, I think that's just my calling. It's what found me rather than me finding it. I'm naturally negative. So I wanted to be more positive. My wife almost left me because I was so negative. I needed to change. And I started to research all these ways I could be more positive. This was in the emerging field of positive psychology around 2001, 2002. So I started to do all this research. I started to practice these ideas. I started to become more positive. I started to write a, a weekly positive tip. People started listening and reading these tips, benefiting from them. And I just realized that this is what I was here to do. And the more I shared, the more it grew. So it's really more like I'm living a mission that, that I'm choosing it. It really chose me in a lot of ways. Hmm. Best ones always do. Uh, How how this this was not this was not like I want to create a business uh, to be successful. This was it's a mission, and then out of the mission, a business emerged. And now we do work with a lot of corporations. We actually develop positive leaders. We have leadership training. We now have a team consulting model where we're working with teams to help them become stronger teams. This only emerged in the last few years. Again, something I didn't choose, but all these different people started to surround me that were gravitating towards my work. And they were great people. We became friends. They came to some of my events. I started to have some speaking engagements I couldn't do. So I started to give them some of the engagements. And out of that, this emerged. I'm like, I need to create something to help them do what they're born to do. Mm-hmm. And last year, my word was expand. Every year, I pick a word for the year, one word that will give you meaning and mission and passion and purpose. And, and last year, the word was expand. I'm like, expand? And then I realized I need to expand. I need to multiply. It's not just about me, right? Can't have the Messiah complex that I have to be there for it to be successful, right? Now I have all these other speakers and trainers going out there doing this work making an impact and you realize, oh, it's not really me. It's the content. It's the material. It's great people helping people become more positive. And these ideas and concepts I've developed over the years that people are now sharing are now having a big impact and it's not even me doing it. So that's what's really exciting as well in, in that regard. But on the personal side, you know, we got the podcast, we have Positive University, and we really try to help people at an individual level as well. So it's almost like I have two sides, one the business side and the other where it's just me to you know, share with others what, what's going on in my life. You ended up at my Thanksgiving table about five years ago when my sister <laughs> says, this is what we're going to do for Thanksgiving. What's the one word? And I'm like... Who is this guy? <laughs> so now, uh, now I get to tell her that I've actually had a conversation with you. So she'll next Thanksgiving is probably going to be a real, a real deal. <laughs> I, I wish I would have been there actually for Thanksgiving, not just with my uh, ideas, but it would have been great to have been there. Yeah, my family's a trip. You'd like them. So how did you? Well, you just told us you know you were negative when you got started. I, I, it's difficult for me to imagine you being negative at this point. Uh, so. How did you even start that off? 
Yeah. So really started with this weekly positive tip I mentioned earlier. And then from there, I remember saying, I'm going to start speaking. I'm just going to start getting out there and start t- giving talks. Mm-hmm. And I had always admired people who gave talks and Ken Blanchard was one of my role models, one of my heroes. And so I thought, okay, I'm going to inspire others the way that I was inspired. And my friend to this day said, I remember you just saying, you're going to go out there and start speaking. And I did. I was wiping tables down at a restaurant that I had owned. It was a Moe's Southwest Grill. I was a franchise, wow. a franchise owner of Moe's. I'm, I'm about 29, 30 years old. I had second mortgaged our home, $20,000 in credit cards to open up this Moe's. And I'm wiping tables down. And there was a woman there. She was the managing partner of New York Life, Robin Wabi. And we met and I started talking. And I said, you know, I give talks. And she said, oh, really? You should come speak to my company sometime. And I never gave a talk before, but I pretty much said I give talks. <laughs> and she had me come speak. And I actually tried to get out of it. I was so nervous and so scared. But I gave the talk and it went well. And I was like, okay, you know, I could do this. And then I told some friends and I had a friend who had a friend that worked for Singular Wireless. Remember Singular Wireless yes, back I in the do, day? Sir. Yeah, we're old if we remember Singular Wireless. <laughs> You guys, you guys are old, and, and so am I. And so, <laughs> and so, from, so you carry from, it well. So. <laughs> yes, yes, we do. Uh, and so uh, he had a friend that needed a speaker, and they had like five hundred bucks, and they paid me five hundred dollars to go give this talk. It was like in Virginia, and I remember flying there, like I'm making five hundred dollars. I'm going to give this talk, and I was really excited about doing that. And that began this journey of doing it. I gave about 80 free talks. Mm -hmm. I gave a bunch of talks at 250, 500. Eventually, I remember saying I'm a $1,000 speaker. And then I remember saying I'm a $2,500 speaker. That's it, I'm 2,500. Then I was like, I'm a $5,000 speaker. That's when I'm going to start charging. And it's funny, you start charging five, and then you get a lot of gigs at 2,500. You start charging 7,500, you get a lot of gigs at five. I don't know why that is, but that's how it happened. Mm -hmm. And I just started doing this. And then I remember selling the restaurant saying, I'm going to do this full time. And I wasn't doing really well in the speaking in terms of, you know, making a big living, but I was making a few engagements a month. And I'm like, okay, you know, maybe I could, maybe I could do this full time. I sold the restaurants. It became very clear that that was what I needed to do at that time. Sold them. And my wife didn't want to because she was really scared about what would happen. And I said, no, I, I have to do this. I have to focus on writing and speaking. There are no other options. Like, I got to do this. And it actually stagnated for a while. It, it didn't go well. It looked like I was going to have to maybe get another job or my wife would. And one day I'm walking and I'm praying, to be honest. And the idea for the energy bus came to me. Boom. And I, I wrote this book in three and a half weeks of mm. just divine inspiration. And I just wrote this book, came to me, bus driver named Joy. She looks like Queen Latifah, but, but bigger and a lot of love, a lot of energy. And she changes the life of a passenger. And that book came out in 2007, wrote it in 2006, rejected by over 30 publishers. But once it came out, people started reading the book, started getting passed around. It was a business fable. So now I'm being brought into businesses and that really caused my speaking to pick up. It really put me in a different category because people started using the book. Jack Del Rio for the Jaguars brought me in to speak. And when I did, I mean, again, now I work with an NFL team. They had a great year. They made the playoffs. The Jaguars making the playoffs were were a big thing. And then when they need you back. (laughs) Yes, they do. They They need to work on their culture some more. And then you know, then I worked with the Falcons when Mike Smith became the head coach of the Atlanta Falcons and word started to spread. Then the Texas Longhorns called. Mac Brown was the coach and Colt McCoy was a senior. Sergio Kindle was the defensive stud, great leader. And from there, it just started to spread and spread and spread. The book has now sold over 2 million copies 12 years later. I mean, again, I don't take credit because I remember the time I'm sitting there writing and it's just coming to me. I really believe in, in a spiritual way. It was all God. I was meant to write this book and impact lives with it. I, I had that book on my shelf downstairs for nine years and never opened it. I don't remember why I bought it. Um, somebody told me about it. I bought it and 
uh, about six months ago, I actually bought the audio book because somebody else in my, in my <laughs> Toastmasters group was talking about the energy bus, right? And I'm like, you know, I, I think I got that book at home. <laughs> so, but I went and bought the audio book because I was easier to listen to that. And, and after all of that, it's like, you know, I bought the audio book. When I started listening to the audio book, I sat down and just listened to the audio book. I didn't get up. I didn't get coffee. I didn't, you know, I didn't split it up. I'm like, you know what? This book affects me. So I sat there and listened to that book and it's like, wow. So that was like very nice. So I just, you know, for all those who may have bought this book nine years ago and you haven't read it yet, you know, you tell you, <laughs> go through that. It'll make a difference in your life. That's all I got to say. I appreciate that. You know, I think the right book finds us at the right time. Like you weren't meant to read it nine years ago. You were meant to read it when you would be touched by it. I have books on my shelf that I haven't read for a while. And then all of a sudden I'll pick it up and I'll read it. And again, I think we always find the right book at the right time when we're open and when we're meant to, to, to read it. So yep. I want to say thank you for buying it though, nine years ago. <laughs> and uh, and at least, it again. <laughs> yeah. And then again, <laughs> So, you know, you have, you have staying power. You're, yeah. you're, you're repeatable. What can I say? So yeah, I, you, we don't release the video of this, but you've got book covers from most of your books. It looks like on the wall behind you. Um, how does it feel to like have taken that, you know, that energy from writing that and, and parlaying it into you know, this, you know, th this library that you, I, mean, I know you did, you do the, um, one word for kids was this week, right? Yes. Uh, yeah. So, so that's what number 19, number 20, somewhere. 20, there, I think, I 20? think 20. Yeah. These are all paintings that my wife has made for me, uh, from a, a local painter and they do the covers of these books and you can release the video if you want to, you guys are good looking guys. You could do that. <laughs> and, um, uh, and, and then, um, well, I don't know about Josh, but Kevin, you, Kevin, you look good. <laughs> You know, I'm, I'm just going to go buy another one of your books. Right here, folks, what I'm, say. I'm just kidding, Josh. Josh that's being I'm negative. Gonna, I'm being, I'm being an energy reason. vampire. <laughs> I'm being an energy vampire there. But, but with these books, uh, yeah, it's, it's, you know, yeah, it's really, I have to pause and slow down for a moment to really appreciate it time. Cause I'm always moving on to the next thing. What's the next book? What, what am I supposed to write next? My wife and I are writing a book together is our next one. And it's called relationship grit. And so I'm so, focused on writing that can't even appreciate the work that I've done in the past. Cause you always want to make your next work, your best work. Mm -hmm. People say my best book is the carpenter. And that is a book about being a craftsman, you know, not a carpenter, but a craftsman where you approach your, your craft mm -hmm. with a pursuit of excellence to try to always get better, to always improve. And you always want to make your, your next, your best. And that's the way I'm looking. So I do appreciate what I've created and I have to sometimes stop and, and think about it. But I, when I think about these books like Training Camp, which is my favorite, and The Seed, which is a powerful book, and Shark and Goldfish, and all these just different books, it's weird because at the time, you know, you wrote it, you were into it, and then later on, you're like, how did I even write that book? And sometimes I'll pick up one of the books and read, read a little bit of it. I'm like, wow, I don't even remember writing these words. Mm -hmm. Like, this was so... Like, I'm like, wow, this is pretty good. This is pretty inspiring. Like, and it's weird. I, I don't feel that way now. Like, and it might be a day where I'm not very, I don't feel very encouraging, inspiring. Wonder if I still have it. Wondering if, if I, you know, if, if I'm, if I'm still thinking creatively like that and I'll read something like that. I'm like, wow, where did that even come from? Well, it came from when I sat down and I started that process. And in that process, it just starts to flow and it takes on a life of its own. And I wrote it with two kids in the house that were young and growing up. And now my daughter's 21, graduating college. My son's 19. So they're both in college. But all these books, just about all of them, were written when they were in the home, when they were, you know, it was crazy and chaos. And I had to get up at six in the morning to start the writing process because I, I wouldn't be disturbed at that point. I, I didn't write in peace. I always think about all these writers. I go to the retreats and I go to these nice locations in the cabin to write my book for the month. And I'm like, oh, I wish that I could have done that. But that wasn't, I had to write through the chaos. But maybe that's what made it more real, right? That it was written through the chaos. Mm -hmm. that, that might be another book title. Writing through the chaos. Writing through the chaos. Yeah. yeah, maybe some something along those lines. Or I think relationship grit is that title because we're sharing our ups and downs of our relationship. Mm -hmm. When my wife almost left me, you know, uh, 
just the challenges we had along the way. No marriage is perfect, but why we stuck together and stood together through that time, hopefully it will be lessons for others where everyone just sort of walks away when it gets hard, you know, in today's world, it just, we got we to gotta help people stay together. There are some relationships that you, you should leave, right? I mean, if there is abuse, right, don't stay in it. That doesn't make you gritty. That makes you uh, potentially put in harm's way. So we don't want that. But, but there are relationships that if you just took it out on the other side of it, you'd experience all this benefits. But too often, they give up. And I, and I, 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 I've been married three times, so I'm, I'm, I'm probably, I probably need to read that book. But, but <laughs> I want maybe, you to read it for this time. <laughs> may, maybe not for a couple of years. Yeah. So, <laughs> but, uh, all right. Um, well, I, I gotta tell you, Josh, you gotta see watching guy, Josh giggle. That's like really cool. That's, that's why we should have the video. Josh, you got a question? Um, well, I, I was going to um, kind of redirect it back to positivity. Um, so if you, uh, if you want to ask about relationships, you, you, well, we're talking about them. Now's a good time, but um, otherwise. Well, let's bring uh, it to positivity. We'll have my wife do an uh, interview with you guys on, on relationships. <laughs> okay. Well, oh, cool. I was going to, there we go. Um, Write that down. Don't, don't let them yeah. get out of that. No, right. <laughs> okay. Um, you, I think it's very obvious when, how somebody is affected when they bring positivity in their own life. Uh, the, the way you did, you know, the way you decided to do in 2001, what has it done for you um, the last few years to bring other positive people into your life? I guess that kind of is a relationship question. Too. Yeah, no, I think it's all about the people we surround ourselves with. It's about the people that who are contagious every day around us, right? We are contagious. We could be a germ or a big dose of vitamin C. So what kind of energy are we bringing? Mm -hmm. And so to me, yeah, I have been really fortunate, especially lately, to be surrounded by all these positive people and all doing great work together. It's like I now have a team. I wrote The Power of a Positive Team, which is what makes great teams great. And then it's funny, after that, I now had my team. <laughs> and I realized everything I wrote, I was now having to live and walk through mm -hmm. and be there for someone. Like We just had a situation where... Um, Someone was able to intercept our emails. One of our consultants had a project with a, with a big client. They were able to somehow hack the email, send the email to the client, and then say, I need payment sent to this account, direct deposit to this account. It's not our account. And the client thinks that we're asking for a request, and it's from us and our email. Oh. Oh, wow. It's crazy. And then they're able to take the emails that are sent and thing, and, and through rules, able to put that email into the archive so you never even see it. Mind-boggling. Such negativity. Vicious kind of things when you think about it. And so, you know, that means that something was paid that we're now not going to be able to get paid for. And I told the consultant, you know, I'll eat it. Like, I'll, you know, I'll just eat it. And that is saying, hey, we're a team. We'll figure out how to do this together. And over the, over the long haul, you are given examples or given, I should say, opportunities to put your principles into practice. That's what I had to do as a, as a father and as a, you know, as a husband and doing this work. Like there are times that, you know, I would have to put this into practice because if you don't live it, there's no power in it. So right. positivity right. lived with others when it's real makes you more positive. Now, whether, whether there were times my daughter said like, dad, you need to read your own book. And, um, I hate it when you know, that happens. she was that teenage <laughs> daughter <laughs> and she was right. And when she would say it, and so it would be those days. All right. All right. Yeah. Being negative. I gotta, I gotta be more positive. So this journey of being surrounded by other people and then doing this work, has made me more positive. And then it's cool because now all my speakers and trainers, what they're going to do, I'm watching how it's transforming them from the inside out. You cannot do this work and not just become more positive. Other than, otherwise, it's a, a fraud. So, Awesome. How did you guys meet? I want to know how you guys met. Um, we met at a party. At a random six, party. Yeah. Senior, yeah, it was just a random party. Um, and... Uh, we started going out to lunch every week or two, and then I moved a thousand miles away, so that made lunch a little more difficult. So we started you know, getting on these chats every couple of weeks or every week or so, and we said, "Well, you know, as long as we're doing this and having really interesting conversations, let's just record them and have a podcast." Um, so, cool. so that's what we did. 
which is how that happened. Yeah. Yes, I love that. I love that. Conversations worth eavesdropping on. Yep, uh, that's awesome. So, so you've seen, so you've ke- seen Kelvin evolve over the years. You've moved through his relationships, his challenges, his third wife, right? You've seen. Well, actually, I, I, met him, I met him right after that right. last divorce. Right after the last divorce, yeah. But but you went through through you went with <laughs> through that challenge with him though, as he then uh, you know then moved past that hurt and pain to find out his, you know his right. love yeah. the love of his life. Yeah, this he, one's for yeah, this no, one's no. for good, Kelvin. I know it. This one's <laughs> Well, we haven't found her yet, but, uh, you know, you know, Josh and I are really different people, which is really interesting. And I still haven't figured out how come we're still friends, but we are. So, uh, <laughs> you know, and, and he's one of maybe two people on the planet. I have, you know, he's my accountability guy. So oh. I need accountability of somebody that I, I really appreciate. Josh is my, is my guy. When he, he needs somebody to say, to, dad, you need to read your books. Um, yeah, <laughs> that's, that's, you, you, that's that's the guy, right? So anyway, and, and then yeah. Kelvin, how do uh, Kelvin? How do you help Josh when what, through uh, his challenges? I know you help him as well. So, and what what ways are you a support to him? You know, that's a really good question. I think I'm just there. Um, you know, we talk. We have a, a really open conversation relationship. Um, so he's a real thinker. He's, he's and I'm not, I'm more flighty, uh, positive Pollyanna person. Uh, but he's really down to earth. So when he just has things to think about, I'm just someplace where he can, where he can have that conversation with someone. He doesn't have to worry about trying to bash him because he's thinking a certain way or, and I just let him be Josh. I love it. And I love it. That that's a lot. That's, I mean, that to be able to offer that to someone is a lot. And then you also probably bring some fun and spontaneity to his <laughs> life. Right. Well, there is that. Cause fun and spontaneity ain't his strong. Suit. <laughs> <laughs> so, right. No. So, right. So he's, he's, he's thinker. He's like real world, like practical. And then you bring the fun and spontaneity yeah, to him in his that. life. So that's a gift as well. My, my wife does that for me in terms of just being, she's fun. And I'm like, I'm like, you know, we got to do this, 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 this. And she's like, you know, Oh, it's Friday. She's so excited. It's Friday. You know, it's, yeah. it, she's, she's in the moment. She's taught me a lot over the years. Well, yeah. Well, you know, I, have I, a I know that like we that. got you here because, because of this, uh, this latest book, um, the coffee bean. So let's, let's talk about the coffee bean a little bit because, you know, I'd seen, uh, before I'd seen a, a little motivational thing. Now you've got a book out of it and I've, I actually watched a podcast this morning. So talk to us about the coffee bean. How, how did that come up in your life as a, as a book? Yeah, it's a, it's a great analogy. It's a great story. It's something that's been shared for who knows how long, right? Someone on top of the mountain probably talked about the coffee bean way back when the egg, the carrot and the coffee bean, but, but Damon West heard the story story when he was in prison and Damon West was a North Texas football player, quarterback, superstar, graduates, winds up getting addicted to meth and winds up burglarizing homes to support his habit. So he's in prison now for, for 65 years is what he gets, gets out in seven years of pro for pro, which is just miraculous that that happens, but it happens because he was such a transformative kind of person within prison. And it happened because he met a guy named Mr. Jackson in prison who was like, think of a Morgan Freeman kind of character. (laughs) Oh yeah. Is, is who would play him in the movie. And and there is going to be a movie about Damon's life, no doubt about it. And Morgan Freeman uh, or Mr. Jackson tells Damon, the story about the carrot dig and the coffee bean. He's like, Hey, you're going to be in prison. It's like a big pot of boiling hot water. You could be like the carrot in prison where you get weakened, you get crumbled, you, you crumble, you soften and you don't want to be that carrot. There's a lot of people in prison. That's like the carrot and you don't want to be like that carrot. You could be like an egg in prison where in that boiling hot water, you get hardened, bitter and angry and, tattoos on you and you really become someone that your family won't recognize when you come out of here. You'll become very filled with, with hate and you don't want to be that, that egg. What you want to be, Damon, is that coffee bean. You want to be able to go into prison and, and transform this prison from the inside out because that coffee bean, when you put that into hot water, it transforms the water into coffee. 
So the coffee bean is not affected by its environment. The coffee bean transforms its environment and you want to be that coffee bean. So Damon came out and started speaking about the coffee bean. He went to Clemson football and talked to the players about the coffee bean, about his story, about the risk of being addicted to drugs and going to jail and then what, he, what he's learned on the other side of that and how he's being useful now and making an impact. And Dabo Sweeney and I are friends. I've worked with Clemson for the past eight years now. Mm -hmm. So I take all credit for their championships and success. <laughs> um, Excellent. Yeah. Kidding of kidding, of course. And he's an amazing leader. And so I'm up there and he told me about this guy, Damon West, who came and spoke and about the coffee bean. And so I Googled coffee bean. I'm like, that would make a great book, like a simple book. I had a vision for it immediately. Book, words, pictures, illustrated fable, like a children's book for adults, mm -hmm. illustrated fable. And reached out to him. We had this great conversation. I said, look, I want to do this book with you. I have a, you know, a 10 book deal with my publisher. This could be one of those books. I'll give you half the advance. I didn't have to, but I wanted to give him half the advance. He said, you don't have to do that. You can even do this book on your own, John. I don't own this story. It's been around for a while. I said, no, no, we're going to do this together. I knew we were supposed to do it together. And we did it. We wrote it together. It's come out. He's speaking all over Georgia, Alabama, Clemson, everywhere in the coffee bean. We had him on my, on my podcast. We had him for positive, the Power of Positive Summit. And it's just been a message now we're both going out and sharing. And the goal is, again, to transform the world from the inside out. There's a lot of negativity in this world right now, a lot of political negativity, mm -hmm. a lot of hate, a lot of anger, a lot of division. But we could transform it by being coffee beans and leading from the inside out and knowing that we have the power to do that. Awesome. So that's, uh, you know, Josh has, a, Josh has a nose for those types of people in our lives. And he, 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 he found you. I heard about, he didn't know who you were. Did I say that? No. He just knew this new book came out. Yeah, but that's I fine. Heard I'm, I'm used to that. Just, just, just you know, again, my sister and, and and the other one, and I'm like, oh, dude, we 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 got a real we got a real guy here. You know, this is gonna be fun. We're gonna have a good time. And uh, and uh, so I I really enjoyed that, and I've enjoyed everything I've read from you. Now I'm inspired to read more of your stuff. Appreciate that. Uh, retraining camp actually, next. Retraining or, camp next. Retraining camp. Retraining camp? I mean, yeah, uh, training camp? Okay. Yeah, my book, Training Camp. Everyone calls it Training Day. Uh, they get it confused. <laughs> that's different. <laughs> yeah, that, that's, that's, that Den, that's Denzel. Training Camp. I think okay. you will love it. It's, it's my favorite book that I've read. All right. And then I, yeah. will, I will do we'll that. I'll that work out, it out this afternoon. And we'll tell people that if they want to read the coffee bean, they should get the, the hard copy because I, I read the Kindle version and it's just like a paragraph of text and then three illustrations. <laughs> um, on my tiny little screen. So, oh yeah, you don't want. Yeah, you like, don't want. Yeah, you want to. You want to actually read the book. Um, so we have people. We have people asking for the audio book. Like it's a twenty-minute book. Like <laughs> just, you can listen to the audio while you're in the bathroom. You can listen just, to audio. I said, just send it. Just send them this podcast because you just. <laughs> right. There we go. Yeah. Right. Send them here. It's <laughs> such a. And now it's, the, the book yeah. is a story about a young man who learns the lesson from his teacher. Mm -hmm. And in the book, we, we follow this young man as he becomes a person in, in the military, a person then goes into the marketplace to become a marketing and sales person, winds up mm -hmm. becoming head of a company, winds up becoming an older man. We watch this person through their journey and how the coffee bean affects their life. And that was the idea, like really simple story. I didn't want to convolute with a lot of dialogue. Yeah, I wanted someone to read this quick book and go, I get it. I need to be a coffee bean. The power's inside me and that's how I'm going to live. And if we could do that, that's the, that was the purpose of it. And I think awesome. the most powerful part of the book personally for me is um, the moment he forgets the lesson mm. and brings it back into his life. Um, the, you know what? I didn't have once didn't, it's once it's gone, it doesn't have to be gone. It can come back. Right, and that's the other thing. Sometimes we do lose the lesson. And yeah. originally wrote it where there that didn't happen. So I was going through the final edits, and as I'm reading through it, I go, "Wait a second. There's no conflict. There's no adversity. There was that one part in the beginning, and then after that, it was like perfect the rest of the way." I said, "That's yeah. not life. Yeah. <laughs> no, he's got to go through a part where he loses it." And I thought, "Oh, that's what happened to me. I knew the lessons." Mm -hmm. 
but then I, but then I lost it, had to get it back. So I thought, okay, that, that's what we have to do. And it's funny how people really appreciate that part of it. Yeah. Without, without, without struggle, there's no, there's no, uh, there's no journey without, without obstacles. There's no feeling of victory along the way. So we, right. we have to have the conflict. Think about the movies we love. If it was all, you know, Pollyanna and everything happened great along the way, there would be no story. And so we watch the battle. We watch the conflict. That's what keeps us engaged. And it's the same way with life. Well, thanks, guys. I appreciate right, that. Right, having, right. You having me on. Yeah. Where, um, where do you like to connect with people most? For, for Social media is great. You know, a lot. Follow me on uh, Instagram or Twitter at J-O-N Gordon 11 for both at J-O-N Gordon 11, not Jeff Gordon, but John Gordon John 11. <laughs> and then also I'm on Facebook, which is, you know, you'll find me on Facebook and yeah, then, we'll have uh, links to all your social, but, but okay. what's your favorite and website? Well, website is John Gordon.com J J O N Gordon.com. And you know how I got John Gordon.com. It wasn't taken 1996. I actually ran for city council <laughs> of Atlanta and, um, and, and I, got johngordon.com to run for the election when it was just getting started with the websites. <laughs> I and I, I created a website. And it's so <laughs> funny because um, this guy named John Gordon out of Minnesota who has a, like a public radio show. It's, he's a technology kind of guy. It's a well-known show. He was so upset he couldn't get John Gordon. But when Twitter came out and got big, he got <laughs> at John Gordon for Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> so I had to get at John Gordon 11 and the same thing with Instagram because he, he got that. So uh, we're, and you know, he's, he's waiting for it to expire on the website all the time. That's why we have auto renewal all the time. Oh, Absolutely. Like, yeah, sorry, yeah. John Gordon. This is when we and he had me on his show. He had me on his show. Uh-huh. And he had another John Gordon, J O N Gordon, who's a saxophonist. And <laughs> I don't even know if that's, that's the right word, but but anyway, uh, we all were on to talk about name likeness and Google yeah. and how it affects our lives. And they were they were pissed because my name always comes up on Google. <laughs> of theirs up front. I think they're gonna understand it. For, you've had it for you know, for so long, Forever, right? Yeah. Well, thanks, guys. Great talking to you. You guys are great guys. Hey, Kelvin, you're awesome. Josh, you're okay. It was really great. (laughs) (laughs) We we, we say that the whole time. No, I'm just kidding. Josh, you're awesome, too. I'm just having fun. (laughs) You guys are fun. All right, keep ruling the world. All All right. right. All right, take care, guys. Bye. Bye. notes and more at jkwdpodcast.com don't forget to subscribe leave a review and share with your friends and we will see you next week bye a better humanhood production